The 2010s will be remembered for the biggest celebrity feuds of the decade, which were vicious, mean, and dumb. In addition to the tabloids that have kept track of celebrities and even their most tribal grievances, the social media climate of the 2010s gave celebrity feuds an extra air of unpredictability. Here are the defining celebrity beefs of the decade. Of all the feuders of the 2010s, no one feuded more virally than Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. It makes sense that Taylor and Kanye start in the defining feud of the decade, even though it started in September 2009 when Kanye infamously stormed the stage after Taylor Swift won video of the year at the VMAs. I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Kanye soon apologized for pulling a Kanye in a tearful interview with Jay Leno. But the feud nearly lay dormant. It bubbled up again in 2010 with the release of Taylor Swift's follow-up album. It seems like Drake got pulled into a long-standing feud with his Cash Money Records cohort Lil Wayne and Pusha T. When Pusha dissed Drake on his track, Don't Fuck With Me, singing, rappers on the sophomores acting like the boss lords, which doesn't seem like that much of a diss unless you get into all the complicated backstory. Over the years, the two were always referencing each other in their songs, and things even got so petty that Drake posted an invoice he sent Pusha for promoting his music through their feud. In 2018, after several diss tracks back and forth, Pusha released the story of Adidon, many considered the most blistering diss track of all time. On it, he accuses Drake of using ghostwriters and fathering a secret love child with an adult film actress. Even worse, the art for the single was of Drake in blackface, a photo he had to apologize for and contextualize. Madonna didn't mind the frequent comparisons between her and the upset singer, but got way upset when she thought Gaga's Born This Way ripped off her classic Express Yourself. She told an interviewer, I thought this was a wonderful way to redo my song. Gaga called the comparison moronic and explained the chord progression in both songs had been around for 50 years. Madonna then performed a mashup of the two tunes every night on her 2012 tour. Gaga then told Page Six, Madonna was a huge influence. I play a lot of instruments. I write all my own music. I spend hours a day at the studio. I'm a producer, a writer. What I do is different. Since then, it's been Gaga stoking the fires, telling Attitude magazine she was hoping to become good enough that she would one day piss off Madonna. The same night Nikki ended her feud with Taylor Swift, things kicked off with Miley Cyrus, the host of that year's VMAs. Concerning the Swift and Minaj feud, Cyrus told the New York Times Minaj was not too kind to Swift. When Minaj accepted her award for best rap video, she said during her acceptance speech, After this that had a lot to say about me the other day in the press, Miley was good. Miley responded by saying, Nikki, congratulations. Things seemed quiet between the two until 2019 when Cyrus sings in her song, Platitude. I love you, Nikki, but I listen to Cardi. Referencing the ongoing feud between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Nikki addressed the line on her radio show, Queen Radio, with some not too kind allegations about Miley Cyrus. It seemed like the rumor of the beef between these two was way bigger than any actual feud. Then, at a fashion week party, Cardi went to talk to Nicki, got elbowed in the head, tried to fight Nicki Minaj, and threw her shoe at her. Nicki then said on her radio show that Cardi has problems, and Cardi lashed out on Instagram. 
Hardy later said in W that the fight was because Nicki Minaj insulted her mothering skills. This once boiling fight has really cooled down. Maybe that's just because at least, according to Chance the Rapper, the whole thing is fake. Thanks for watching JTV. Subscribe for more.